if, if there's one thing I probably could change, would be that we educate people better about the river. And I think if they understand it and how it works and how it did work, then they will respect it more and, uh, and treat it better. Uh, Robert Bowring and I've been on the river for uh, 63 of my 67 years. I grew up in Mildura and uh, we spent all our time on the river and uh, in those days it was the end of the paddle steamer era. Most of them were tied up and uh, just used as uh, houseboats. Uh, we used the gem for example as a diving board below the lock during the 56 floods which was great for us kids. My father always told me that his father told him that um, my great grandfather was using the paddle steamers to go up and down the Darling as a hawking vessels. So they'd leave Wentworth with uh, iron mongery and well everything really. You know, if you, if a lady wanted a dress on the way up, they she could be all measured up. The seamstresses on the boat on the way back, or the dress would be delivered. Well, my great grandfather was sitting down for lunch on Christmas Day and uh, the skipper of the Emily Jane arrived. He just swam across the river to um, tell them that it had burnt to the waterline. So he'd lost the Emily Jane and the barge and all the stock. So uh, after that, he had to find another paddle steamer. So with the insurance money uh, from the stock and that, he purchased uh, the Marion's barge, which was down at uh, Malang. And he uh, towed it to Echuca, where he put a plant in and uh, and turned it into a hawking vessel, which was nothing like the guys it is today. He kept that to about 1908 and he sold it to Chafee Brothers and uh, they turned it into a two-decker and they had uh, some accommodation but mainly cargo. And then over the years it just kept changing, you know, more passengers, less cargo until eventually it just became a passenger boat. It was renowned as, as being the first uh, boat that actually did cruises at a cruise from uh, Morgan up to uh, Renmark and down to Goor and back. And that was so popular that then the Gem, which was a sister ship, and they both did it each year. In the late 40s they tried to keep it going, but eventually uh, the company went into liquidation and uh, it was sold off. Had several owners, but it spent some time then as a house or boarding house at Berry. And it was in 1963 that it. Uh, the National Trust bought it and we bought it down here and they put it in the, the old Randall dock here as a monument to the river trade but as you know inevitably a tied up boat that just rots away it's uh, if we had left it there in another hundred years it would have been gone so the best way was to actually restore it and keep it operative which means you know you're always doing it up as it needs to be done we started in 1990 and we recommissioned it and put it out in the river and the recommissioning was in November 94. Um, I think there was some like, no, it might have been 425,000 voluntary hours. It was all done by volunteers except for the shipwright who um, came and uh, steamed the planks for the bow and the stern and taught us how to put the rest in. Uh, otherwise it was all done by volunteers. When we were restoring the boat, and I didn't know a lot about you know, putting planks in and that, but we learned. You only needed to get a network of people that you could run ideas off and decide what was best for here. We had two old guys here, they'd steam the planks for three hours during the day, because you, you work on an inch, uh, an hour, you know, three inch planks. So we'd, they'd steam them down, we'd come down when we knocked off work and we'd put, them, put that one on. And the next day we'd take it off and reshape it and put it back. And uh, we just went on for months and months doing that. And then still run by volunteers. Um, they have to have the right qualifications, you know, we have to go out with a Master 4 and a Master 5 and, uh, and everyone has, an engineer has to be an MED 2 with steam and uh, so yeah, it's still, but it's still voluntary. We've got a young lad that um, now has got his qualifications who is our engineer, one of our engineers, and I can remember young Eric coming on and I think he was only about 9 or 10 when he first came but we don't have too many other young ones that are going to pull it on. We need to pass it on to some younger ones fairly soon.